my guys, this this uh, video is all about um, Dumble, these sort of Dumble style amplifiers here. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Ramon. Uh, some people call me Goose. <laughs> Um, and we're going to talk today just about um, dumbbell style amplifiers and in particular my two that I have here and how I set them up and how my kind of more philosophy because really I'm not so te technically minded. Um, I'm, I'm coming more from a player's point of view. So, And I've been playing these amps for a long, long time um, and uh, this one in particular is quite old now. And uh, so I'm just going to give you my little bit, little piece of knowledge and hopefully it might help you guys. And this is actually a question I've had a few times and I had this question yesterday and I promised somebody I'd make this video. So here we go. Um, first of all, I just want to tell you the, the setup that we've got here. We've got, we've got a, a little a fill cabinet. We've got two heads, Dumble style um, copies or clones, whatever you want to call them. We've got this thing up here, which is called, uh, this is a copy of a dumbbellator, which we're going to touch upon in a moment. And we've got an effects pedal here, which is a reverb pedal. It's a T-Rex roommate, but you could have any pedal there, it doesn't matter. Um, a little bit about the history of these amplifiers. Um, the first clone really was the company in Germany that Dumble used. He sent his sh uh, chassis over to Germany. And this German company put them into cabinets, one by 12 cabinets. Um, which would look like Mesa Boogie Mark I cabinets, actually. And then they sold them. And then they actually copied <laughs> the amps um, to uh, Dumble's dismay. And But then they changed it and copied uh, Mesa Boogie Mark I. So that was probably the first Dumble clone. The second Dumble clone was made by Tommy Cougar in Sweden, which is the Mystic Blues amps. And quite possibly Tommy made the first ever 80s Dumble clone ever. So this is really a really old amplifier that he made, and this is a newer amplifier that he made. But these, even this one here is well over 10 years old now. This is a lot older. So this one here is getting the Robin Ford, not getting, but it's going for that Robin Ford style sound, that 80s Dumble circuit. On albums, my one of my favorite albums was Supernatural. Um, check that album out. It's got a beautiful, incredible Dumble sound. That's, if I want to try and get something like that, I, I play through this amplifier. This is much more unique. It's built on the Dumble style topology, but it's kind of Tommy's own circuit, but based on Dumble circuit, okay? So we're gonna have a look at that one in a minute. This is 50 watts, this is 100 watts. So this really is very similar to Robin Ford's amplifier. The great thing about these amps is you've got four sounds, okay? Um, that's why I like the Overdrive special platform, because it gives you four sounds with this pedal, okay? So, You've got like a clean sound, you press that, you've got a boost, and then you've got an overdrive, and then you've got an overdrive with a boost. So you're boosting that overdrive, okay? Okay, so the preamp boost, what that basically does is it takes the EQ se section, as far as I understand this, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, it takes the EQ section out of the circuit and you go straight into um, the power amp, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> you can tell me. But the preamp, it boosts it. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that now. This is a clean sound. Now, if I wanna sort of get it a bit more, but still stay clean. And these things here don't make any difference. So you can you can move the, the EQ and it, nothing happens. It's not supposed to happen anyway. Whereas I hear it happens, stuff happens, yeah. So that's that's the first thing. Okay, what's the most important thing about a dumbbell amplifier? Okay, and getting a good sound is you. Okay, you're the most important thing because it's about your touch, what's in your brain. Okay, what sound are you going for? What sound do you hear in your head? Um, and that sound that you hear in your head, hopefully, we're going to be able to get it out of a dumbbell clone amplifier. That's the the, the purpose of this video. Your touch, the way you touch the string and the way you hit the plectrum, you know, the hit with the plectrum or if you play with your fingers, what is your touch like? Your touch is very, very important on this amplifier, probably more than any other amplifier. So if you hit the, the guitar hard like I do, I hit it too hard, we, we, we've got a solution for that. Uh, if you hit it too soft, you know, and you don't hit the guitar hard enough, again, there's solutions with this amplifier. This is what this amplifier is really, really good for, you know? So with that said, the other most important thing about this amplifier setup, because this is really a, um, this is a whole kind of a setup thing you need, you know, 
um, it's one system, should we say, is the speaker. It's really, really important. The speaker is, I can't say how important having the right speaker <laughs> is, trust me. Um, now, I know Robin Ford uses a 2x12 G1265. Two, two, two Celestian G1265s in a cabinet, okay? That cabinet, I think, is four ohms, okay? If I remember, it's a long time I've been on the Robin Ford forum. Um, so if you want to get the Robin Ford sound, maybe you want to try those speakers. But remember, Robin Ford didn't always use those speakers. Sometimes he used the classic lead 80s. So he, he, he changed the speakers as well. He started off with two EVs in a cabinet, two by 12 EVs. I mean, that horrendously loud. He was using that with Miles Davis. And then with the same amplifier, he changed the speakers to Celestians. It's going to be softer, softer sound, okay? He came down from um, Super Lead 80s, I think, to G1265s. So an even softer sound, you know? So it depends if you want a soft, woofy sound or do you want a hard sound like the EVs, like a, like a brick wall, you know? Um, it's going to really hit you. Um, so that's another thing. Think about the speakers you want. Now, the speaker that I have, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's called uh, Altic Lansing 417, and it's ceramic. It's not um, uh, Al Nico. It's not the Al Nico one. It's a ceramic. It's the last incarnation of that 417 model series, um, and that's what I use. It's 100 watts. It's nice. It's 100 watts, so it's not 200 watt um, <laughs> crazy EV sound. It's a bit, bit more manageable to the ears, but it's very chimey. It's got an aluminium cap. Now, it works with these amplifiers. Those Altex don't work with every amplifier. They're heavy and they don't work. You know, some, you know, you might want to try, um, or, you know, there's so many different types of speakers. Um, WGS are very good. Celestian are my favorite speakers. My favorite speakers are Celestian. So if, if Celestian will have a speaker, I'm sure that's going to sound good. A lot of guys now are changing up from a 2x12 system to a 1x12 system and using 100 watt Celestian speakers. That seems to be the way a lot of my friends who own real Dumbles are going. So just a uh, food for thought. But with my system here, the it's geared up. I gear everything up for that Altec Lansing um, 417. Very chimey, uh, very hi-fi. It's a very hi-fi speaker. This speaker lived inside a keyboard PA for a sax saxophonist who was going around playing pubs for year donkey's years with this monitor and the Altec lived in the monitor. So the, this Altec is really worn in. It's not been reconed. It's very mellow. So I was lucky. It's a lucky find. It works well in this system. Maybe a new one would be too harsh, but there you go. So that, that said, um, let's move into the control panel here. Um, and, uh, and let's uh, talk about how I set this amp. Before I do, just want to talk about the guitar. Obviously, guitar is going to make a really big difference. So if I'm waffling on here, we're already 10 minutes into the video. Um, the guitars, the, the pickups, it's very, very important. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But if you're using humbuckers or you're using single coils, um, it's going to make a huge difference, you know, a huge difference on this amplifier. So that's another thing. We're going to set this amplifier um, up to be able to use single coils and humbuckers. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay. Okay, guys, we're here on the front panel of the 100 watt Mystic Blues amp. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, this is everything is flat here, and I'll show you how I'm, I'm going to set this up. First thing I want to talk about is the pot ratios. Okay, um, on this particular amplifi amplifier, the pot ratio is different to the ratio on a real dumbbell amplifier. Um, so that's one thing you want to bear in mind. These pots. Um, won't be the same as say for example Robin Ford's setting so I can't look at Robin Ford's amp and then do the same as him and it's going to sound the same but even if they were the same pot ratio I can tell you guys every single amplifier on this style is different okay it, everyone has its own voice its own settings there's no like you can't copy another amp settings and it's going to be the same as yours it might be but odds are that it won't be so I'm going to just tell you how I set the amplifier up um, and hopefully that might help you. So the first thing we're going to do is set the master volume up. Now, you can't see this, but um, I'm running this through a dumbbellator. And the dumbbellator is attenuating the amplifier. So it means that I can ride this master volume anywhere I like. And really, you want to have the master, really, in my opinion, between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, it's probably going to sound the best. But just for this... Um, video we're going to we're going to run it at 10 o'clock okay so if i just play now 
and I'm going to put the switch here down. Okay, so we've got the master where we want it now. So this is the next important part of the amplifier. This is called the blues and jazz switch on the Mystic Blues. On a real dumble, it would be called rock and jazz, okay? And this is really an EQ setting. If you want a very hi-fi, thinner sound, you go for the jazz setting. If you want a thicker um, and uh, sort of more normal Fender sound, you go for the blues or rock setting, which is the top. So let me just show you the difference. <laughs> All the basses come back into the circuit. If I go to the jazz setting. It's a much thinner, lower volume. So we're going to keep it on this blues setting. The next uh, important thing after the master volume is a preamp volume. What is the preamp volume? Well, the preamp volume really feeds the guitar signal into the um, preamp circuit. So here what we're going to do, um, we're going to, um, I would suggest, because you might want to have it here at two o'clock with your single coil and it will still sound clean, look. It's, it's not distorting. But as soon as you put a guitar with paths, you know, humbuckers in, this is really going to distort. So I personally bring this right back to either 11 or half past 10 on this amplifier obviously it might be different on yours but you just back it off because what you need to anticipate is plugging a Les Paul into this amp and that's going to really distort this um, preamp volume you know so this just makes the amp kind of nice and mellow okay we've got two other switches we've got bright switch here and the mid cut. This mid cut has actually been taken out of the circuit, but it's useful to have sometimes. This is a bright switch, so this is with the bright switch up, and it just, just adds a bit of chime there. Maybe takes sucks some of the bass out. And that's really, really nice, um, especially with the Stratocaster, that can be a really nice clean sound. Now I don't have that in the circuit, the reason is, is because if I have it on and I press my overdrive channel and then compare to it off, so I just prefer, you, what you've got to think about guys is that this amp is, is only one channel and, and these settings have to work for paths, single coils and overdrive and clean, so that's what, it's, it's a bit of a compromise. So we're gonna we're not gonna have this bright switch on because we want to have a good overdrive to sound and for me that doesn't work. Let's look at the EQ section. This is really gonna be different for whatever speaker um, situation you have going. And the two main controls obviously are the bass and the treble. And really, um, what I was finding with this particular amp when I had two by twelves, it was way too bassy. So I used to have to back off the bass. With the Altec, I can pretty much keep it neutral. Twelve o'clock. Sometimes though, I like to just push the treble, okay, because I, this bright switch doesn't work so well for me. So I compromise with a bit more treble on there. So let me show you. So we take the treble down a little bit. Put the treble up again. So it's just a tiny, tiny sort of hair of treble on there is really really nice okay then we've got here a presence control okay now with this presence control um, you could really max this out and it's going to give you some beautiful things also this has got a cap on it and you can put it out there and it gives you a beautiful very charming but I don't use that because again we're always thinking about the overdrive, which we're going to use in a minute. So just pushing a bit of the presence really helps. So that, that's our sort of EQ. It's very simple. It's a lot simpler than people think. That's our EQ setup for the clean sound. Now, if I go over to the overdrive, I'm going to go to my back pickup of my Telecaster. And I'm going to roll off a little bit of the tone on the Telecaster. 
And what we this is this is the thing with the damper amplifiers. This is quite um, low volume, but the the volume here, uh, the volume of the amp of the overdrive and the clean, you really need to play it at concert volume in order to to really know where your level is on the overdrive because when you're playing quieter, um, this can be in a different place. Okay. So if I, what I'm going to do is just A, B, A and B, the clean. So maybe I want to bring it down, maybe just a touch. Let's have a look. Or maybe up, maybe it needs to be there. So normally, you know, the classic Robin Ford thing is, is that. That's what Robin Ford has. It's a sort of one going up that way but you know don't worry what he want his one has worry about what you amp. so my amp pretty much sounds good there just just right there now let's see what sort of i like to have not too much distortion on this amp yeah so if i ride it about there so that might even be too much there we might want to back off the overdrive a little bit now you've got a boost that preamp boost if you want more overdrive you just press your preamp boost on the pedal and you're going to get a lot more sustain So you might want to put it up, you know, even more if this, if you want to play rock. Okay, so I use a kind of a compromise, you know. You know, so probably about there, you know, I don't like to have too much overdrive. If I need more, I can put the preamp boost on. So there we've got the actual amplifier set up. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, but my overdrive is a different position. I've got so much more overdrive than you have because on this amplifier, which is like Robin Ford's, there's not much overdrive on just the overdrive channel. It's quite a tame amplifier. We're gonna check out my other amplifier, my 50 watt, and this is a different story. So maybe if this, if you haven't really understood it with this amp, maybe you can understand it more with the next amp. So let's just go to the next amplifier. Okay guys, here we are with the 50 watt music blues amplifier. This is, as I said, this is quite an old model. Okay, and this is based on Dumble's topology, but it's slightly tweaked. There's, it's not really based on any particular Dumble, but it's a Dumble circuit, if you see what I mean. So this is um, a little bit more rock city, as Dumble would put it. And we're going to do the same system again. We're going to have all the switches down and we're going to have everything flat and we're going to take it from there. So first of all, I'm going to just play you some rhythm guitar. I've got my pickup selectors in the middle. And that's actually sounding quite a little bit harsh for me. So again, what the first thing I'm going to do, I'm happy with that muscle volume here. We're going to leave that muscle volume there. We're going to go to blue. So let's just check that. Let's put a bit more sort of bass in the circuit, a bit more fendery. It's a bit sweeter. Let's bring that master down a bit. So it's much more kind of. Um, it's, it's much more in your face tone, which is what I love about this amplifier. It, um, so it's a little bit more tricky to play. You, you can't make a mistake on this amp because everybody's gonna know about it. Um, so let's just um, try a few different settings out here. Let's, let's put the master volume. Like I said, now we need to look at the preamp volume, okay? Now on this amp, I've actually marked a dot. Can you see this dot here? Because for me, this amplifier sounds best when it's right down here. This is a very hot amplifier. So what this means is if I have it here and I put in a humbucker, it's going to be distorting like mad on the clean channel. I won't, it will start 
going into overdrive in the clean channel. So in order to avoid that with humbuckers, I have to bring this volume right down here, okay? And that's one thing I wanna say, guys, you shouldn't be, you know, don't look at Robin Ford's amplifier and think, okay, I need to have the same settings as him, you know? Why is mine like it? Don't worry, every amp is different. And if you have to have it really drastically down here, then that, so be it. So that's my preamp volume, and I've set my master volume here. So it's brought the volume of the amp down quite a bit. So let's bring that master up again. Okay, so there you go. We've got a nice clean sound there. The next thing we've got is some bright and mid switches. Again, this mid boost is not in the circuit, but this, this again is. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful sound, but it's way too bright even for clean. So we, that is unusable really for us in this situation. Okay, so we've got the EQ section as we did last time. Again, let's bring, we might want to bring the treble off a little bit for this. Okay, and the bass again, we might want to put the bass up a bit. So that's kind of nice. We're just taking a bit of the edge off the treble and we're just boosting that bass because we've only got a one by 12. This is a 50 watt, it's a one by 12 and we just need a bit more bass back in that circuit. Okay, so then we've got the presence control again. So let's just, let's put this at um, two o'clock. So that's, that's kind of nice, that's really nice. So let's put the overdrive channel on. Okay. Oh, so that's that's way too loud. So first thing we're gonna do is drop, drop this level here, okay? Still a bit too loud. And again, don't worry about the, don't worry about the, the, the settings being really harsh. So that's nice on that sound. That's that's a good volume here for our overdrive channel. So now I put another dot here. I don't know if you can see this, and this is where my drive needs to be, all the way down here. Why do I want this drive all the way down there? Well, because I want to play blues, man. I want to play some low down blues. <laughs> You know, because I don't want to be playing Eddie Van Halen Blues, God rest his soul, uh, on my normal overdrive channel before I put the preamp boost on there. Because remember, I've always I've got the preamp boost as well on my on my guitar pedal, uh, the the amp switcher. So I've got more sustain if I need it from that preamp boost. But here, what I want to do is just get a good kind of bluesy tone, which is not too crazy, yeah. Because remember, when I put the paths in the humbuckers, it's going to be much more sustained, okay. So really, that's, a, that's a, a really good setting for this overdrive, okay? So it's great to show you this amp, guys, because maybe your amps, you need to do something drastic like this as well, you know, don't be afraid to do that. So again, I, I want a really kind of bluesy overdrive tone, so. Okay, so there we go. We we could we could you know maybe adjust this. Maybe I could put a bit more 
preamp. But if you if I put my preamp here, which is 12 o'clock, check this out with the overdrive channel. <laughs> So it becomes unmanageable. So that's why we need to bring that preamp volume all the way down here and the drive all the way down here because then I've got a blues amplifier. And we can always put the master volume up. Amplifier is not going to care where your dials are. It's not going to say, well, if you've got the dial here, I'm not going to give it up. You know, No, no, it's, the amp's always going to sound good. So really, the, the the what you're kind of balancing out here is the master volume for your overall tone and then how much preamp how hot is the guitar signal that you want going into it and then with your overdrive section it's the the, the volume of your overdrive which you, you need to balance between your clean and your overdrive and then how much drive you know how much rock and roll do you want that's your rock and roll knob okay so Let's just go back here. And that's basically it, guys, okay? Um, if you've got an amplifier, it'd be great to hear about your settings as well, okay? But this is really, you know, they're two very different amplifiers. I use them in different ways. This one's very good for the Kudakasa slide guitar. The other amplifier is great for the, um, the more sort of um, Robin Fordy sort of fusion -y blues. Thanks guys for watching this video. Hopefully it's been helpful. One last thing I didn't really mention too much was the dumbulator on the top here. And basically what this has got some bright switches here, which I don't really use. That's for long cable runs. Um, I set my return volume. This, there's two types of dumbulators. There's one that's a stereo and there's one which is mono like this one. And basically I set my return to 12 o'clock and then the send, I just um, add the, in the volume that I want. So this really attenuates the actual whole system. This is my volume control is here for the whole thing. It's not here. I set my volume and everything on this amp that I want to keep or this one. And then I control the whole system from this one volume up here. And that means that I can have my master volume nice and hot. Okay because otherwise these amps don't really wake up and sound great. Every amplifier is different, as I said. They, these two are just, you know, they're, it's like two cheeks of the same backside, but they're the, the same, you know, but same kind of style. So this one here, I love this amp. It's a bit more of a challenge to dial in, and it's on the overdrive, it's very, very responsive. So if you make a mistake, it's not gonna cover up. really play around with it um, and it can sound different every day even <laughs> but it's really good fun it's very good fun I love these amplifiers like I said you've got four sounds the sound I didn't really talk about today was the overdrive and the preamp boost which is going to give you a lot more overdrive still so really that's really it you're really kind of basing these amplifiers around your own playing, your own touch. It's very personal. It's not one size fits all. I hope this has been of help to you. If you wanna leave me some comments and tell me how you set up your amplifiers, it's gonna be fantastic. Tell me what speakers you're using. That'd be really interesting to see here if you're using a different type of speaker. But this is pretty much what I've been using for many years now um, the, with the Altec speaker. You know, my philosophy is if it's working, don't change it, keep it the same. And if you've got something that sounds great, you know, why, why change, why experiment? So that's really, that's, it's been staying like this for many years now. Um, I hope this has helped you and uh, let me know if you want me to do any videos. I'll do whatever you want. Take care guys. See you soon.